But, hey guys, guess I'm in England and we were in the past, or whatever. Anyways, we were totally supposed to be in Boulder, Colorado in 1965, but we ended up in Bromley, England, 1695. Dr. Coriolis is like a terrible scientist. He built a defective time machine. No wonder NASA fired him. He totally sucks. And I think he breathes with his mouth open. It's like he's always gasping for air or something. Someone get him a neti pot. Gross. Dr. Coriolis here. I'm uh, the proprietor of Nebula Nails, where we offer a variety of services to include uh, full body waxing and, and hair sculpting. Uh, my shop doubles as my laboratory. I'm committed to saving the Earth, and uh, to do that, we have to convince folks that uh, climate change is an actual phenomenon. Uh, Research has shown that uh, folks don't listen to scientists. So uh, I, I need to kidnap a Playboy bunny to tell the world uh, that we need better ways of handling our carbon emissions. Uh, lure her into thinking that she's won a free spa day and she'll walk right into my trap. My word! We have ourselves in a dilly of a pickle. I don't know if the time machines actually malfunction or if dear sweet sugar cube pressed the wrong destination. Heavens no, she's had plenty to drink. I tried to warn her. I said, cubes, honey, it's too early to drink. And now look, she's got us in the land of the lost with a bunch of godforsaken dragons. Ugh. I decay why Dr. Coriolis thinks he can kidnap a Playboy bunny. They're all, like, hot, and would probably never get within 10 feet of him. His mouth breathing alone would, like, scare them away. If he could lure them with a day spa, it might work, but he can't let them know that he, like, works there. He's just, he's a creeper. I just want to let, tell him that his time machine is dyslexic, and I want to know how the fuck we're going to get out of here. I'm, uh, pretty sure that Sugar Cube is dyslexic. She not only punched in a completely different destination, she's landed us in the wrong gosh darn century. I'm also sad to report that my beloved Flux Capacitor has been fried to smithereens. Obviously, there's no place for me to plug in my soldering iron. <laughs> and uh, all my spare parts for the time machine are back in light cord. Uh, we have no way of getting back to our present time or the future. <laughs> How the fuck are we going to get out of here? Oh, sweet, precious baby Jesus in heaven. I cannot believe we are lost in the wilderness. It's almost like we're the children of Israel. Someone must have sin in their life. Now, I know it can't be me. Sugar Cube is covered because the good Lord looks after that dyslexic fool. It has got to be the doctor. He does have a keen obsession with pornography and thinks that it could change the world. The time machine is broken and the beasts of the fields are coming to feast on our carcasses and there's nothing we can do about it. How the fuck are we going to get out of here? How is the fuck art thou getting out of here? Hey, I didn't know you could talk. Thou hast not asked, ergo I shan't have answered. Huh? I am afraid of, I lack understanding of, how doth that say, huh? Do you speak English? Art thou a daft imbecile? Nay, thou art a jester. Nora? Dr. Coriolis? Can one of you translate what this guy is saying? He's speaking Aramaic or something? Speaking the King James English. You know, the language of the Bible. Uh, actually, it's the language of Shakespeare. Uh, King James thought the bard's use of language was so majestic that he wanted the holiest of scriptures to be as beautiful. Okay, Dr. C. I'm going to tell you this one time and never again. Nobody likes a know-it-all. 
Most of what they say is often ignored, and sometimes they even end up with a bloody nose. So, you guys are saying that he is speaking English? Doth thine jester make a mockery of everything? Uh, she's, uh, she's not a jester. She's just that stupid, uh, we're from the future. What dost thou mean, future? Well, he's going to get all technical, so I'm going to nip that in the bud. Honey, we come from the year 2016. He made a faulty time machine that brought us here to your time, 1695. Dost thou use sorcery to traverse in time? Uh, no, I use physics, you see? I warned you. Say something smart again. Physics is kind of like magic, because... All of the forces are invisible. We feel the effect, but we totally don't see what's going on. You know, like gravity. Ugh, Newton. Yeah, oh my God, he knows Sir Isaac Newton. Is this his castle? Can he get us back to the future? <laughs> this humble abode belongeth to Gareth the Opaque. Gareth dons the wizard cap and has successfully conjured forces in the nether realm to protect King William. Well, does he know Isaac Newton? And can Newton make us a contraption, like some mechanical wings or something, that can like have us fly out of here like we're angels? I consumed Newton's favorite dog, Diamond, two months prior to thine arrival. Sir Isaac has been distraught and vowed to taketh mine head. What about this Garth fellow? Can he help? I've not had the pleasure of making his acquaintance. Ah, we're doomed. I can't handle this. Well, he is a bit light in the loafers, isn't he? Running off like that when we are plumb in the middle of a crisis. I know it the fellow that mayeth assist in thine dilemma. He is the caretaker of this castle and first cousin to Gareth the Opig. Oh my god, I think I have gotten smarter because I, I understand what he's saying. That is wonderful, Cubes. Now, Mr. Dragon. My Christian name is Delmont. Delmont. Thou mayest refer to me as Mr. Delmont. Mr. Delmont, can you introduce us to this uh, Gareth the Opig's cousin? Thou may meet with Cecil the Harbinger. Who is that? I think that's Gareth's cousin, honey. Uh, don't interrupt. I think Mr. Delmont has more to say. Thou may meet Cecil the Harbinger, first cousin to wizard Gareth the Opig, after thou assist me on a quest. Do what now? 